Welcome to Talking Tuesday. I am your host, Fancy Quant, and today I lost my goat. <sighs> so, yes, you heard me right. Um, so, let's rewind here. I started back at this fintech firm in, two th- or in July of 2022. Uh, within a month, I was on the search for a right hand individual here. I needed somebody that could, you know, run the show with me put together a team, build a quant structure from the ground up from absolutely nothing. Uh, And I knew the individual, I had to have them. And so a month after I started in August, I started hunting this individual, pulled out my cell phone, personally messaged them on their personal phone. And I was like, hey, this is the new role. This is the job. I know about this much of the job. I don't know a ton about the job, but I know somewhat a little bit about the job. And I I need you to kind of help me put this entire thing together. And so discussions started. Um, A lot of the discussions are around, you know, what are we going to be doing? What exactly do you need? Do you need a development team? Do you need a validation team? Uh, Do you need a governance team? How many people are you going to hire? How big is the team going to be? What's the compensation structure look like? How are you going to compensate the employees underneath of it? Um, exactly what are you doing and how are you interacting with the other departments? What do you think of the other departments? Um, do you have data lined up? Do you have software lined up? Why are you using Python? Python's garbage. You should be using SAS. You know, I don't know if I can make the switch. And the discussions went on for months and uh, I had to have them. They are the GOAT in the sense that they're the greatest of all time in credit risk. Uh, hands down, the best person I know for a couple of reasons. So the person I'm hiring that I need to help me run, so if you're running development validation, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're a senior person, you're running the team with me, I need someone who can actually build models from the ground up. This individual is fairly senior and they hand code and they can build models from the ground up, which is extremely rare for anyone in their position. Um, On top of that, they know credit inside and out, forwards and backwards. They taught me credit. They know everything under the sun when it comes to credit. So that is a huge thing. Like, you know, you need to know the business and that is a critical piece there. And the last piece that I require of every single senior person is you have to be able to teach. And this is not an easy skill to have on its own, but then to have the ability to build models by hand, to know the business expertise, and then finally to be able to teach all of that and put all that together and mentor junior uh, quants. It's like the near impossible person to find. So as the time's going by, we're having the discussions, recruiters keep pounding on my door of, you know, Dimitri, I saw you got this awesome new job. And I saw, you know, you're the head of quantitative risk and research. And I, you know, know that you're going to be hiring. What are you going to be hiring? How much budget do you have? You know, I can have perfect candidates for you. And the amount that it costs to use a recruiter is extremely expensive. So they're ranging from like 20 to 30%, um, of the first year pay. So if I hire someone, so super cheap here, average quant, you're coming out, let's say hundred grand, uh, a year or two experience here, I pay you a hundred thousand uh, dollars. They got to take 20% to 30% off the top. So that's going to be 20 to $30,000 just to hire you. So that doesn't include your compensation. Now, when you get into the senior roles, again, you start <laughs> salary increases, uh, that 20 to 30% gets pretty large. So it's a big fee. Now, a lot of these firms also started sending me like like resumes without the names on them. I looked at them. I looked at the junior ones they wanted for the junior roles. I looked at the senior positions for the senior roles. Um, there's a lot of nice people in the industry, but that's about all I can say about them. Um, there's not a lot of all-stars, guys. I, I beat this home constantly. There are not a lot of quant all-stars. I mean, I've worked in this industry for nine years now. In nine years, I've met less than five, less than five all-star quants. And I've met hundreds of people as I've worked in consulting. I've worked at a lot of these large banks and institutions. I've worked with, you know, validation teams, development teams. I've worked with implementation. I've I've worked all over the industry here and I can't find the rock stars. They're so hard to find. They're so hard to find guys. And so anyways, I was a little disappointed here. Uh, A few months ago, bonuses came out. I guess about a month ago or so. Bonuses came out. Um, I had the goat on the line. They were considering the opportunity. They wanted to make the the transition. It'd be something completely new, but they're at the end of their career. It's a little risky to do the jump. 
Um, you know, but they kept getting passed over for these promotions for a bunch of political reasons I'm not going to go into. And they finally gave them the promotion this year. So the bonus came in. I'm sure they gave him a big bonus, a big raise. I'm sure they're making you know, stellar money now, uh, more than I could pay them. So money is a huge contributor. Banks have very, very deep pockets. They can pay them more. I am sure this individual is probably making more than I am now. So it makes no sense for them to come over to me uh, and work with me. And I absolutely love working with them. But at the same time, I get it. I understand. Um, you know, I was a little hurt at first, but I get it. I understand. I probably would have made the same decision uh, to stay at the bank, you know, finish so many years, do some retirement and all that, have an awesome 401k, make a lot more money. Uh, you have to learn almost no new skills because you're so dialed in what you're doing. It just makes sense. Um, and in the process here, I'm still looking. I still need that all-star candidate to fill that position. And I'm still searching. And so I went off into another individual who I thought would be a good fit. I don't know them super well. Um, I've got a few references. I've talked to them, had a few coffee chats in the past. <sighs> But they're in the green card process. And so if any of you know about international dealings and getting visas and green cards and all that, the last thing you want to do is be at one company in the process and then jump ship to another company and try to get the trans the paperwork processes transferred over. And a lot of times there's rules and technicalities that you can and can't do. And I couldn't get that individual to come over either. So... That has been a challenge. That has been one of my biggest challenges is being able to bring in an all-star top talent who can do models, who can do all the theory and the business side and can teach all that. Like, yeah, it's hard to find. And then on top of all that, I'm trying to do junior hires here. And so as I've mentioned in the past, the way I have been going through this process here is I like to hire people from the bottom and train them so I don't have to fix them. Because often when you get people who have so many years of experience, you end up having to fix every single thing about them. And if I would have been able to hire the GOAT, uh, they would have trained them correctly as well. So I don't have to deal with that with the senior hire in that position. They could have trained all the junior people. We had been living the dream. Uh, unfortunately, that is not what happened. And so I hired a junior hire, which is working out awesome. Um, I would like to grow my team a little bit, but I need to get the senior pieces put in first. Uh, with the economic uncertainty, with things kind of collapsing a little bit here and there at the banking side, like, you know, Silicon Valley Bank and all that, uh, we're hesitant to hire as well on the junior side. So I had another junior candidate who was from Turkey. Um, so they're in the U.S. going to school here, but they're from Turkey. Uh, they had some awesome experience. They had a good degree. I thought it was going to be an amazing fit. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to put any offers together because I'm in flux now trying to figure out who's going to do the senior role, how much bandwidth I have to manage you know, my current staff, um, plus put all the processes and systems together and then do training and all that. It's It's a lot. It is a lot, guys. So this new role has been stretching me in very many ways, in very many different directions. Um, and of course, I want everything to go exactly as I want it to go. I don't want any hiccups. I don't want any issues. I want to really show that we can do quant finance at a whole nother level. And we can do machine learning at a whole nother level. And we don't need to stoop to doing stupid, ridiculous things that people do. And so me with my grasp on the, the team, uh, and trying to put in training and career development and, you know, orchestrate everything. It has been the biggest challenge of this process is going to be getting all the pieces in place. Um, also getting all the quant pipeline set up, which we talked about in one of these episodes in this podcast season. Um, guys, you don't just show up somewhere and they just have, you know, the data and data engineering dialed in. They got the quant piece dialed in. They got the, the DevOps or the ML ops or whatever you want to implement your models within. They don't have that dialed in. They don't have the software dialed in, right? It's hard to get all the pieces together. And the firm I'm at has actually done a pretty good job on most of these areas, like data and software and all that. But then you put my newly formed iceberg of a splash team right in the middle. Um, I'm displacing pieces and trying to figure out how we get everything hooked together. So that has been a large, large challenge uh, with the job. But I like it. I like where I'm at. I like what I'm doing. It's been fun. Uh, but I want you guys to kind of see these struggles as a manager. Like you don't just run out there and pay a bunch of money and hire people and fingers crossed it works. Uh, you have to put all the pieces together and do the training. 
Yeah. And these are the challenging parts of actually the management pieces. The fact that, which I haven't mentioned before, I'm actually building some of these models and I'm doing, you know, validation work and I'm putting all the structure, the risk policy, the procedures together, and I'm doing the training and I'm writing a Python package. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out what the businesses need and trying to juggle all that at the same time. So it has been a crazy, crazy busy last, I don't know, like eight months, nine months now, but I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it. Um, anyways, that's just a quick update for me. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.